Hi everyone, it's the Wednesday after the second Sunday after Epiphany, and it's time for another Wednesday Word. In today's Wednesday Word, I want to circle back to one of the readings that uh, was read aloud in worship this past Sunday. Uh, the sermon went in a different direction from the Gospel, but I want us to come back to the Gospel reading that was appointed for just three days ago and talk a little bit about uh, one of the parts of that passage that I think may be an important word for us to hear today. That passage is John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51, and I'm going to go ahead and read it to refresh your memory. John writes, The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Come and see. Nathanael has questions about the message that Philip has come to bring him. He has questions about how anyone who comes from a town like Nazareth could be the sort of person written about uh, in Moses and in the prophets. He has questions about whether what Philip is saying could possibly be true. When we are questioned by people about something that we say or profess, we often have the instinct to immediately want to explain ourselves or defend what we're saying. We want to add more information or more context so people will come to understand what it is that we're trying to say uh, based on our own words and our own authority. But Philip doesn't do that. Philip doesn't lay out more of an argument to try to convince Nathaniel of the rightness of his profession. He simply extends an invitation. Come and see. I think we sometimes get the idea that we need to be ready to share the good news about Jesus in such detail that we get scared out of making any effort to share that good news. We worry that if someone has questions and we aren't able to answer them that our entire effort is going to fail. We wonder whether we are the people who can actually bring that word of comfort and grace and hope to our friends and our family. But if Philip can provide us with any sort of guidance on what it means to be people who share the good news, it's in his model of invitation, of not trying to over-explain what it is about Jesus that's so compelling, but just inviting Nathaniel to come and experience for himself what it means to be in the presence of Jesus. It turns out, Philip didn't need to say any more than that. Jesus did all the work of revealing himself to Nathaniel in a way that caused Nathaniel to immediately recognize how special and important Jesus was. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. 
maybe we don't have to do as much as we think to bring people into relationship with God. Maybe we don't have to have long, lengthy arguments for why inviting people into relationship with Jesus uh, is a good idea. Perhaps all we need to do is be prepared with a simple invitation. Come and see. Come and experience for yourself who Jesus is. Come and experience the grace and love and peace that are possible for those who profess their trust in our good and gracious God revealed in Jesus. Come and see is an invitation to wonder, an invitation to surprise, an invitation to seeing God in ways and in places that we may not expect to. And as much as we need to extend that invitation to others, perhaps we also need to hear it. Perhaps we need to be invited again to wonder, to surprise, to awe at all that God makes possible in our midst. Perhaps we've become jaded by years and years of feeling like we're doing the same thing. Perhaps external circumstances have narrowed our vision so that we have closed ourselves off to awe and wonder. So maybe we too need to hear Philip's invitation to come and see anew what God is making possible in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I extend that invitation to you today. Come and see what God is up to. Come and see where the grace and love and peace of God are at, are loose in the world. Come and see where the Spirit is moving to make new life and renewal and joy possible, even in the challenging times in which we find ourselves. Come and see that Christ is always present to you wherever you go and whatever you do. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day. I'll look forward to seeing you again next week for another Wednesday Word. Take care, friends. Be safe and well.